Well, thank you all for being here. Um, we want to honor Ryan for getting his appointment to the Air Force Academy. Well, you start, but we're glad it's finished. But uh, we'll have Congressman Guthrie say a few words, and if Ron wants to speak to you, that'd be great. So, okay. You start? Yeah. Okay. Wow, what a great honor, what a great privilege. We had a fun phone call the other day, didn't we? Yeah, kind of late in the season, but you know, whatever, whatever day you get your appointment, it's the day you get your appointment, right? And uh, I know you guys are proud. You have to be extremely proud that you're going to the Air Force Academy. I know everybody in the room understands what that means, and it is uh, it's one of the toughest schools in America to get into. Uh, it's right up there, probably top 10 in terms of the toughest schools to get into. And it is it shows the hard work. So everybody knows to, to get admitted, it's not just you're the highest on your ACT scores or SAT scores. You have to show that you're a leader. You have to show that you're, you're going to lead men and women in combat. That's what you're there for. Are you going to be a pilot? That's what you want to go there for? That's what I'm hoping for. Hoping for. And so uh, it is, uh, I know you come from a military family, so you have that, you understand what you're getting into. And it is, uh, I always tell people, when you go to the, of course, you're active duty. So when you go to the service academies, it's not a little bit of military with college, and it's not a little bit of college with military, it's a lot of both. I remember mm -hmm. when I was at West Point, I think the average student would take about 16 hours a semester, and we took 20 and a half, and that was about our right, 20 and a half to 21, and did all the military at the same time, and so, uh, but it is, uh, I know it's an honor, it, it just shows the quality of education that you've gotten here in Breckenridge County. I guess you've moved around since you're a brat, right? I spent, I spent uh, all four years of high school in Brickell. Okay, good. Brett's a term of endearment in the military. <laughs> we can say that. Uh, it is, uh, it, so it's just a great honor to be here because I know how hard you work for it. It's not something you wake up and say, I think I want to go to the service academy. And I always tell people when they don't have the opportunity to go to West Point, if you, when you show up on day one, if you look at your commanding officer in the eye and say, go Army, beat Air Force, you'll have a smooth for you. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that'll, that'll clarify everything for you there. But it's kind of a brotherhood and a sisterhood that we all have. And, and so I went to West Point. Uh, they were ladies. It was kind of new to have them when I was there. But it is uh, the great. So it's a brotherhood and a sisterhood. And all the service academies, we have our three hours on one particular Saturday. And the, I won't say who won the Commander in Chiefs Award this year. But I did get to go to the White House and see presented the Army. So that was fun. But uh, so anyway, I want to you want to come up, and uh, I just want everybody I know in the room that knows you, knows how how hard you've worked for this, and how difficult it is, and it is one of those things. I know you've talked to them. Is that is when you wake up sometimes in pleach summer, you just got to put one foot in front of the other. Is that if I make the next step, I can take the next step and the next step. Because it is, uh, I don't want to sugar. I don't want to scare you, <laughs> but I certainly don't want to sugarcoat it. It's it's like basic training plus. And you have all the other things that are unique to the service academies you have to deal with. And, and then your academic year. You got all this it's very difficult freshman year because it's mostly math and science, I'm sure, if it hadn't changed. And at the same time, you got all the other stuff you have to put up with as a service academy cadet. But, uh, but I will tell you, there's not a better place to become a young man, not a better place to become a leader, and not a better place to, uh, to influence a country. So my uh, classmates, well, they're same time I was there, not my classmates, was H.R. McMaster was my B-Squad leader, uh, who's uh, National Security Advisor was President Trump. Mike Pompeo was your head of me. Mark Esper was in my company, who was Secretary of Defense. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're gonna you're gonna make a big <clears throat> impact on the world. I know that's why you want to go there, and that's why you're going to the right place. So this is just uh, I know you got have you gotten your appointment in the mail yet? The no. big one, no. the big fancy one you're going to put on your wall? Not yet. I know it's on its way, but this is a certificate of recognition. I know you already received one. So the way it works, we get to nominate cadets to apply or, or candidates to apply, and then the school picks, and it's a rigorous process that you've learned, and uh, very few come out on the other end, and I'm glad that you did, and I'm proud of you. So it says certificate of special congressional recognition presented to Ryan James Frazier, on the occasion of your appointment to the U.S. Air Force Academy, May 28, 2024, and signed by me. So we'll do a photo and... <laughs> and you have a great advocate, because when I first called, they thought it was a crank call, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So they handed the phone over and somebody threw me away pretty quick. Right? 
But I didn't know the circumstances. We just had got phone the call that you'd been admitted, and, and there was some quagmire at that. Army never would have done that. Army would have it straight. <laughs> but, uh, so I think he thought it was a great call. And uh, it took me a second, and I realized, I don't think, think it's a great call. So uh, we, we verified, and he's packed up, ready to go, right? Yes. There you go. You can say a few words. I'll sit down and shut up. <laughs> So I didn't know I was going to be talking before I got here. Um, but I don't, I don't have as much to say, except thank you to everybody, especially my parents who supported me through the last several, several years, ever since I said that this is something I might want to do. Um, they kind of guided me along the path. And then I moved here um, summer 2020. And, you know, ever since my freshman year, they, the school knew that this is what I wanted to do. I walked in for scheduling right before the beginning of the school year. They were like, what do you want to do when you graduate? I said, I want to go to the Air Force Academy um, and fly planes. They said, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We've got these two brand new programs. One of them is the aviation pathway being taught by Mr. Paul Road Trammell. And the other one was the ROTC pathway now being led and taught by my dad. Um, and then they threw me in a bunch of honors and dual credit classes. Um, freshman year, I said, okay, this is kind of nice. I like where this is going. Sophomore year, it started getting a bit more. I started taking um, honors biology and dual credit pre-cal, two of what I thought were going to be some of the more difficult classes that I'd take. I would be, you know, put in my place junior year um, when I took Miss Mingus and Mr. Kennedy for a second time in a row with AP Bio and then dual credit stats. Oh, it was it was stressful. I got through it. I had great teachers helping me along the whole way, and there's no way I could have done it without the teachers and the school staff helping and supporting me along the way. How did you feel when you finally figured it out? I didn't know what to do. <laughs> we have the press here. I see all their questions. We're gonna let we're gonna do a press conference, right? Now. All right, there. Right, yeah, I'm over here. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, just talk about the reaction when you got. What was your reaction when you heard that you were you've been accepted? So who this guy calling you? Was, right. <laughs> yeah. So like he said earlier, it was a private phone number. I didn't know what to think. I was too excited to think, but at the same time, I was a bit too suspicious to really believe it and go all the way into it. And then once we did verify it and figure out, you know, this is actually what's happening, this is real, I was so excited but also so nervous that I couldn't put my thoughts into words for the next day or so. I, I went to school the next day, I went and I told my teachers, um, and Miss Fain was there for one of the really funny ones. I was talking to all my English teachers um, and told them the story um, that I had told Dr. Carter and everybody else, you know, I got this phone number or this call from a private phone number and it was this guy saying, hi, is this Ryan? I said, yes, sir, who is this? And I had no idea who I was talking to. He said, hi, Ryan, this is Congressman Brett Guthrie and I'm calling to notify you of your appointment to the Air Force Academy. And like I said, I had no idea it was real or anything. So I went upstairs. First thing I did was I talked to my dad. I was like, hey, this guy from a private number called me, claiming to be Brett Guthrie. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I read the US regulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't put any of it into words, any of my thoughts or emotions or anything. Um, but now I'm just, I'm still overcome by excitement and you know, a little bit nervous about what this summer is going to bring, but I know with the support I've got here and the things I've been taught, lessons learned, that I'm sure I'll be just fine, and I'll excel in everything I try and do. So if somebody says they're Brett Guthrie, trust them, right? That's why they're saying, <laughs> you can trust me, right? No, but so the, those of you here that know the story, I guess that accidentally you had, it was like an army never would have done this, right? You had, had said that you weren't admitted. And all of a sudden you get a phone call from me, and I didn't know you had that. I, I figured it was waitlisted because it was late in the season. Oh, this is great. He tried to play. I hope he's gonna still going to go, and I call. And so I, it's an experience I've never had before to have someone get on the line and say, you better you know, essentially accuse me of trying to practice. Correct me with UCMJ, right? And, uh, but, I, but I get it now, and, and I worry. Then, then Michaela, here we go. 
gosh, did we make the, to make sure we got the right number, we went through all of our stuff and made sure it worked. Mm -hmm. and, but the bottom line is, that now we have something to laugh about. Yeah. And everybody's happy, and you're going to the Air Force Academy. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a question. Ryan, right. how long does it take to become a pilot? So it'll how be, much ex extra training and so forth? It'll, it'll just be about a year of extra training, training after I graduate. Mm -hmm. Good. Where do you go to? I know Pensacola's Navy. Where's the Pensacola Air Force? I, mean, I don't right. remember. No. I, I knew at one point and I've forgotten since then. So. Probably in Texas, I guess. Brian, you care to talk a little bit about the aviation pathway and kind of how you feel like it maybe don't prepare you for what's coming? So, the aviation pathway, I've said this a few times. I went into it saying this is what I want to do after I graduate. I'm almost completely sure of it. The aviation pathway, though, it gave me the opportunity to reinforce that I do want to fly, and for the long run, study engineering. I didn't learn that till this senior year with my capstone project, um, where I got to work with aerospace engineers across the country, as well as the head of department of aviation at the Air Force Academy. Um, and I don't think I would have gotten any of these connections if it wasn't for this program and the guidance I've gotten from Mr. Bertrand. Do you want to fly fighter jets? Is that what your goal is, or <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm aiming for fighter jets, but you know if the Air Force decides to tell me you know we want you on this, then that's where I should be, and you know that's where God intended me to end up all along. Amen. You got comments? Super. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Ron, I think I can speak for everyone here in all of Rutherford County Schools. We are just, we're thrilled for you, uh, overcome with just excitement for you. And I will say that uh, I was privileged enough to get to see Ryan after, it, it, I don't know exactly how long it was after the phone call for you, Congressman. Uh, <laughs> I was still recovering from it too. <laughs> but uh, it, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the best stories in my career. And I told someone the other day, it's probably a top, I've been in this for almost 20 years. And uh, it's probably a top 10 moment for me in my career, Ryan. Uh, we were exiting a board meeting and Ryan pulled in and he was shaking. He was so excited <laughs> to tell me. And, and uh, I, I don't know, we, we probably hugged each other two or three times out in the parking lot and just uh, listening. And I've always, uh, I've always told people around me that before I retire, I, I want us to have a service, a service academy uh, person, you know, graduate from the schools. And so Ryan's fulfilled one of my lifelong goals <laughs> as well. I didn't have to do anything. Uh, but uh, in all seriousness, I, I, I know, and I'm sure Mr. Bennett is, is principal and, and everyone in the room would say the same thing. I mean, Ryan uh, represents the very best in Breckenridge Ridge County Schools and, and definitely comes from a wonderful family. We're, we're blessed to have both of his mom and dad working in the school district. Uh, great siblings. Uh, we can't, it's, it truly is an honor and we're so glad, Ryan, that you moved here in the summer of 2020 and uh, can't wait to see uh, the future, uh, th the future come, and can't wait to have you back here uh, in future school years, talking to JROTC cadets and aviation students about your journey and what's going on. So, congratulations, big guy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This looks like I have cake back there, right? You want to say <laughs>